This episode is brought to you by Cox Contour TV. Find the entertainment you love with Contour TV and Contour Stream Player. Learn more at Cox, cox.com slash contour. Coming up. We would have never got the screams out of our heads had we not saved her. It would have, it would have been something that would have lived with us forever. For Vault Studios, I'm Will Johnson. You're listening to The Daily Crime. Get her up, get her up. Here, get the, get the bag. A 22-year-old woman trapped inside of a duffel bag. Didn't make any movement or no sound. So we knew there was something in the bag, but we didn't know what was in there. And when I unzippered it, there was a female looking up. She, she was trapped inside that zippered bag. It would have been just a matter of time before we would not be able to save her. I mean, just seeing her face, you can tell she just, she had no idea what was going on. Odyssey sponsors include HBO Max, presenting The Staircase, a new limited series starring Colin Firth and Tony Collette. Inspired by a true story, The Staircase explores the life of Michael Peterson, his sprawling North Carolina family, and the suspicious death of his wife, Kathleen. The cast includes Michael Stuhlbarg with Juliette Binoche and Parker Posey. The Staircase premieres May 5th only on HBO Max. Listen to the companion podcast on HBO Max or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm joined now by Vanessa Croy, anchor and reporter at Ken's Five in San Antonio. Vanessa, thanks for being here with us on the show. Glad to be here and share this story. It's an amazing one. This all started with a high-speed chase back in early April, right? That's correct. Uh, it was down I-35, so coming out of Laredo, which uh, if you're familiar with the area, Laredo, Laredo is on the border of, of Texas and Mexico. And uh, where this chase ended was probably about, I would say, 30 miles from the border. So uh, the individual, as far as officers understand, uh, was stopped at a checkpoint and uh, did not want to stop and just kept going. And that's when the, uh, the, the chase began uh, with Border Patrol. And uh, Ensenal Police, which is a very small town, about 20 miles outside Laredo, uh, they joined in on the chase, as well as our state troopers here, Texas Department of Public Safety. So this high-speed chase, how long did it continue for? Uh, They tell me it was about 40 miles, and and the individual driving uh, the SUV was going over 130 miles an hour. And if you actually, so so the uh, Ensenal police uh, gave us their dash cam video, which includes most of the chase. Uh, It is down the highway, but it's also down side roads, feeder roads, uh, where some of them are just two-lane highways. So it's not only dangerous for these officers, for the individual who's driving that car trying to get away from police, but it's also dangerous for the people that live in this community who may be coming head on, you know, the other side of the road and encounter this, which unfortunately happens all the time in these border regions. So this dangerous high-speed chase goes on for many, many miles over a period of time and then ends with a, a dramatic crash, as so often they do. Actually, yeah. So actually what happened was uh, they uh, DPS had thrown down spike strips uh, shortly before the vehicles came to a stop. So uh, when they threw down the spike strips, uh, you know, the tires... Uh, were gone basically. Um, and he came to a stop at a dead end road and hit some barricades. So thankfully the crash wasn't as bad as we've seen in other incidences out there. Uh, but when right on impact, when he hit the the barricades, uh, the car started to catch on fire. Uh, they tell me they believe it was the brakes were just, you know, everything in the car was just spent right from this long chase, the tires were gone. So, uh, the car did catch on fire and the driver ran away from the vehicle. And as he's running away, my understanding is then he starts to tell officers responding what's inside the car. Well, what I, and what did the officers tell me? So the, it, it, just a backstory here. Uh, the common term out here is bailout. So what happens is <clears throat> they believe that this individual has migrants um, hiding in this car that they are trying to smuggle into the U.S. And so when they, they begin these pursuits and, and they, it comes to a stop. They usually see multiple people running out of the car and just trying to do anything to get away, right? In this case, they saw the driver um, and, of course, officers, some of the officers went to chase him while the uh, police chief of Ensenal PD, his name is Pablo Balboa, actually went to search the car because they thought, well, we didn't see anybody run out of the car. Maybe there's someone still in there. So you can see him on the, on the video of the dash cam 
opening all the doors, looking under the seats, quickly checking the car. He, you can even see, and he explains this, uh, he peers in the back of the SUV quickly to see you know, if there's any anyone in there and doesn't see anyone in there. And about this time is when they catch the driver. So it was a very short time. I think they said um, it was maybe three minutes uh, from the crash when they actually caught the driver. And that's when he told them there's someone in the back. And this is where, and, and you put this together for obviously Ken's five and on air and you show this video footage. It's just, I mean, it's mind boggling what, what officers, they, they run to the car and pull this woman out of the car, explain and describe that. Well, and, and the situation was, and the way that they first told me the story was, you know, there, there's a car, they check it, uh, they catch this driver and he says there's someone in the car and they, it is literally, they all rush in. There's, there, there's a lot of them, they rush in and you can see them running. We actually have the body cam from the DPS sergeant who is, you can hear the spent breath on him just trying to get there as quickly as possible and them saying there's a female in there, there's a female in there. And, you know, the urgency is, you can just see it all over the video. You can hear it from the officers on the scene. Uh, and they had already checked the car, so they don't even know. They're, they're trying to get in the back, right? And they can't back there because the car is on fire. Uh, Sergeant uh, Hinojosa with DPS, you can see him break the back of the window, and they pull out a duffel bag. And so, once again, they knew there was someone in the car. They see this duffel bag, but they tell me it's not. there's nothing moving inside. But they can't find anyone else, so they think, what what is in here? You know what, what's going on here? And they said uh, quickly unzipped it. And Officer Hinojosa says to me, "I see a female looking up at me when I unzippered that bag." So there was a young woman inside that duffel bag. They tell me that, and I you can see it on the video because I logged the time. It was not ninety seconds later that that car you hear a pop. And it was completely engulfed in flames. It will give you goosebumps to watch it to see how quickly those officers were able to save that woman's life before that car caught on fire. And what is the condition of the woman inside and what what did police learn about her? Uh, well, the, the details of the actual um, woman are, um, we don't have a lot of details on that. But she we know she was turned over to custody of Border Patrol. She was... As far as we know, physically okay. Um, of course, we don't know the emotional state of that uh, the young woman. I believe she was uh, 22 years old. Um, she looks very young. At first, I believe they thought she was a juvenile, uh, but then learned that she was 22. Uh, of course, doesn't take away the uh, severity of the human trafficking, uh, you know, suspicion there that's going on. Uh, but uh, she is able to, to stand up. You can see in the video, she stands up. Uh, law enforcement officers tell me that she was completely shocked, that she d was very confused, had no idea, you know, kind of what had just happened, basically. Uh, they tell me that she didn't have a lot to say, and they even wondered, was she told not to say anything? Was she told you know, not to move. And, and Sergeant Hinojosa has a, a, just a, a line that just really kind of makes it sink in for you. He says, you know, what was their intentions with her? We don't know. So it, it will tug on your heart there as well, because unfortunately this is, we're seeing this happen more and more in these border regions. So uh, as far as we know that she is fine, she was turned over to Border Patrol custody. Uh, she was um, undocumented, meaning she's not a U.S. citizen, but I do not know her country of origin. At one time, things seemed pretty good for Stephen Howells. The thing that I always remember is his smile. But life would become more challenging for Howells after he started experiencing delusions. He ended up living in a group home just outside of Phoenix, Arizona. But Stephen Howells would never get the chance to leave. What kind of care do people get who do have a mental illness? I'm Erica Stapleton. Join me for Locked Inside, a new podcast from the 12 News I team and Vault Studios. So, Vanessa, you mentioned, you know, that police down there are obviously very familiar with someone trying to sneak somebody across the border. But in this case, there's maybe the suspicion that this is more than just bringing somebody across the border. Human trafficking might be involved. I mean, she was hidden away in a duffel bag. This is a human being stuck inside a, a duffel bag. Exactly. And, and, you know, you listen to Chief Balboa and they see, I believe they see at least, I think they tell me 10 to 15 of these chases a day. I mean, it, it's it, it's incredible how much this has affected these communities, right? And, uh, you know, and, and you have to remember, too, a lot of these officers, their fathers, uh, their uncles, they have, you, you know, 
they have families too. And to see that the way that these migrants are, you know, treated by these smugglers and, and these criminal organizations, and it really hits home for them. Um, I can tell you that the police chief said, he told me he was just angry. He was just so mad. The fact that someone would actually treat someone like an object and put them in a duffel bag. Um, you know, you can just feel the emotion with them that once again, they are doing their job as they do every day, but it still hits home and it does have an effect on them. And, um, you know, when he saw her face and this poor woman was in shock and that's when he just felt that anger. The emotion that I had when she came out, to tell you the truth, was anger. Anger because these people do not care. To them, it's just a lucrative business. It's all about the money for them. And he said that, you know, just that woman was in a duffel bag like a piece of clothing. And it just it's almost a testimonial to how much it impacts these communities and the migrants who are just treated uh, in these awful put in these awful situations and their desperation and, and to think about what kind of situations they must be in in their home country to take that risk. But again, we, we don't know for sure what was going on in this situation, whether she was a migrant worker or it was human trafficking or, or what was going on, but clearly something criminal. Exactly. And and that's what Sergeant Hinojosa alluded to, that we don't know. It, they didn't know if it was just a, a human smuggling attempt. They don't know if the intent was trafficking. And I think that's the part that sinks in the most is that they just didn't know. In regards to the driver, we do know that he was arrested and uh, he's in Border Patrol custody. Uh, we don't know what the charges are at this time, uh, but they uh, local law enforcement said that they did know he was facing federal charges. All right, Vanessa Croy at Ken's 5 in San Antonio. Thanks for talking to us. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you all. Appreciate your time. Thanks for listening to The Daily Crime. Be sure to check out our weekly show, True Crime Chronicles, available wherever you listen to podcasts. For Vault Studios, I'm Will Johnson.